The following Angel Wing chapter is based off fictitious events. Only the names have remained to embarrass the innocent. Chapter 7. Rock Climbing Catastrophe! The next three days before the weekend were boring. Delilah's parents decided to let her stay at home and start back at school next week. Delilah didn't mind. She was preoccupied in cleaning her room, along other mundane tasks that only women can do. All the while, thinking about that trip that was to take place. Mike had called the next day to tell her the plans and what she needed to bring. They were to drive out to White Rock, a hot spot for camping and mountain climbing. They were to go and head out on Friday in the early afternoon and camp for the night. Then, come back on Saturday, Mike was gathering all necessary climbing gear while Annalise planned out the meals. Like a woman should do, apparently. Alistair was going to bring some stuff to show them that they wouldn't normally use in a populated region. He had hinted about some magic spells, which is a dark art and frowned upon in most Christian societies. Mike and Annalise didn't know about Alistair, except for the fact that Delilah was bringing a friend along with her. They were in for quite a surprise. Which is really interesting because it was Alistair who first brought up the idea of rock climbing with Mike and Annalise. Hmm. Finally, Friday came around. Delilah grabbed her stuff and waited in the living room. At roughly 2.35, five hours after she'd woken up and waited in the living room, the doorbell rang. Delilah jumped up to answer it. A smile leapt into view as Alistair crossed the threshold. Delilah walked forward and hugged Alistair as he hugged back. Got everything? He asked, his voice full of excitement and wonder. I think so. Let's just check before we go. We don't want to forget anything important. For the next five minutes, Alistair went through Delilah's paraphernalia. Oh, that's what the kids are calling it nowadays. Deeming it sufficient, he grabbed her pack and headed outside. Outside was a dark green Subaru Outback. He really, really likes dark green. Delilah placed Delilah's pack in the back, and they got in. Alistair started the car, and they drove off down the road. We're meeting Dyke and Annalise! Asked Delilah. Annalise is at Mike's. We're going to pick both of them up there. Ten minutes later, Alistair was parking the car at the curb of Mike's house. Delilah got out and ran up to the door, brimming with glee at seeing Mike and Annalise's faces when they saw Alistair. Mike entered the door with Annalise right behind him. Annalise squeaked with delight, like this, ah! and hugged Delilah, positively beside herself with happiness. Unnoticed by the threesome, Alistair had followed Delilah up the stairs and was standing patiently behind her. It was Mike who noticed Alistair first. He did a comical double kick. How did she get what? Leaped in the air and nearly knocked Alistair to the ground with a bear hug. His reaction was more than Delilah had expected. Annalise's was no different. She stared with shock at Alistair's figure, now being obscured slightly by Mike, then ran forward and joined in. Group hug! The happy reunion lasted for several minutes. Mike and Annalise sling questions at Alistair. He answered none at first, persisting that if they didn't leave quickly, they wouldn't reach White Rock until after dark. Annalise grabbed her stuff while Alistair grabbed the large duffel bag that held the mountaineering gear. They piled in, Mike and Annalise still looking stunned after seeing Alistair once again. After four hours of driving, they finally reached White Rock. However, it still took them another half an hour to navigate through the scruffy underbrush to find the spot, which was interesting considering that not four weeks before, Annalise had slid on a horribly icy road and flew over an embankment. I guess spring comes quick. Alistair had been there before, but just to camp, not to rock climb. He came for fun, not for business! Mike had been here several times with his family, and Annalise had come once before. Delilah gazed at the surroundings she would be calling home for the next 24 hours. It was very different than she imagined. The rock around was made of a dark beige color, which is yet another form of brown, rather than the white she had expected. To the north was a large rock, like, mo like a monumental lump of clay, blocking the bleak desert from view. To the south, a large cluster of rocks formed a natural semicircle, 15 tall and worn s 15 tall. It's a number tall, wow, cool, and worn smooth from the weather. Many shallow groves and holes were scattered all over the rock face, some the size of mouse holes, others large enough for a human to stand. No, for a human stand, my bad. Tumbleweed grew in large clumps here and there, bleach a pale yellow for dehydration. He speaks good English, he really does. They unpacked, setting the gear on a clearing set on patched sand. Mike grabbed rocks and began setting up a fire pit pulling a small shovel and digging a hole in the sand. Alistair began setting up two tents, one for the boys, one for the girls. Annalise grabbed Delilah's hand and began pull, pulling tumbleweed and dead wood together to build a fire. Thirty minutes later, the tents were erected, <clears throat> this fire pit dug, and a roaring fire dancing merrily with searing life. 
Alistair had pulled camp chairs from the back of the Subaru, while Mike grabbed a large log over to the fire. Annalise fetched the food package for the evening meal because she's a woman, and women apparently have to do women things. Delilah felt hungry and opened her packet with vigor and began to eat. It wasn't fabulous, but at least it tasted good. After eating, Alistair headed back to the car and grabbed what looked like a chest. I'm assuming the chest you carry things in, not like a human chest. It was large enough to hide a child in. Okay, still kind of creepy, yet it looked rather light. It was made of bright red wood, embellished in gold. Again, more gold. There wasn't a keyhole, nor a handle, nor any opening to the chest. Maybe it is a human chest. Alistair set it on the ground near the fire and stood up. On the drive up, Alistair had explained everything that he had to Delilah, to Mike, and Annalise. They hadn't seen his hand, though. He removed it from inside the club and placed it on the chest. The chest top simply faded, leaving the box underneath. Alistair leaned in and pulled out a tome no larger than a textbook. It was covered with a blood-red fabric, etched with rubies. Mmm, finally he's not using sapphires. Flames were etched in the fabric, imitating the roaring fire beside. A single symbol lay in the center of the flames, drawn in black ink. 